So until our last video, we tried creating the controller. We also access the data from the C data method that we actually created. So this one, so everything is working fine and we could able to get the same C data that we have injected in our API over here, which is cool. So everything is looking pretty good right now. The next thing which we need to do is actually we need to use what is called as a repository pattern. In fact, the repository pattern is one of the most important pattern in the data access using ORM. The reason being the repository pattern abstracts the implementation versus the access layer. For example, within our code, as you can see on the controller, on the product controller, we have actually tried getting the products using the to list method, something like this, which is not the ideal way of doing because here you are directly calling the product DB context, which is nothing but the ORM's entity framework to access the data. And this becomes very complex if our ORM, instead of having the entity framework, if we're gonna change some other technology, then we are gonna end up with the tie up of the entity framework a lot. So we have to somehow abstract this logic into what is called as the repository pattern. So if you just search for the repository pattern, you will see that there is this Microsoft documentation where it says that the repositories are the classes or components that encapsulates the logic required to access data sources. They centralize common data access functionalities, provide better maintainability and decoupling the infrastructure or technologies used to access the database from the domain model layer. This is exactly what I was actually talking about. So that's what we are gonna be doing over here at the moment using the repository pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go to this particular uh, data over here, uh, probably here I'm gonna create a folder. I'm gonna call this as repository. And within this repository, I'm gonna be creating a new class file. I'm gonna call this as the product repository. And this product repository is going to hold our actual implementation, the product DB context. So I'm going to create a constructor and I'm going to call this as product DB context, something like this. And I don't know why this braces comes in and hit control dot. We add this usings and I'm going to create a field and I'm gonna make this as underscore context. So this becomes underscore context. Get rid of this one. That's it. And this is the constructor initialization. And then we are going to perform the different methods that I'm gonna be doing. Basically, let's say if I want to get all the products, so I'm just gonna do the list of all the products, then I can probably do something like this. So you can see that uh, get all products probably something like this. I'm going to add the link and the collections of generic. There we go. So this is going to give me the get all the products for us at the moment from here. So what does that means is that we now have the entity framework being called over here in the product DB context. And now I'm actually going to create a interface, something like this, like I product repository, where this product repository is the one which I'm going to be calling within my controller on this particular place over here. So I'm going to get rid of the product DB context completely, which I was doing before. And this one as well. And rather, I'm going to call the I product repository, which is this one. I'm going to hit control dot using this particular I product repository. And let's get rid of this. And also I'm going to add the field over here. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the product repository of get all products, something like this. So this way, you will see that it is going to get me all the products, but in turn, it is going to be actually performing the same products start to list for us. So that way it gets the data from this particular entity framework. So that's the only change while compared to the previous operation that we did. And that's exactly what we'll be doing even for the other operation. For example, if you wanted to do something like getting a product by ID, for example, 
then we can do that as well so you can see that i'm just going to say public product and you can see that it automatically brings that for me like get product by id uh, then this is what i'm going to be doing so you will see that all these magics are going to happen from our github copilot that's great and it also brings me up this add the product so i'm probably going to be doing exactly the same thing add the product and you can see that this is what the code i actually wanted to do so that's coming up for me automatically but i actually wanted to return the product once the product is even being saved let me return not this product but the small letter product and i'm going to be returning the product here which is going to be this one so that's the add product and then I'm also going to do what is called as an update product. So let's see if GitHub Copilot brings it up. There we go. It brings it up. That's great. So that's the update product. And then I also wanted to do something like a delete product. That's coming up for me automatically. So you will see that GitHub Copilot almost minimizes my typing like half. I think more than half. Like whatever I wanted to do, it automatically does things for me. So that's about the delete product. And after I delete the product, I don't really need to return anything. So probably I'm just going to make this as wide for now, which is cool. So that's about the product repository where you have all these things. Probably I'm going to delete this one more time and hit control dot. And I'm going to uh, maybe get off this as well and regenerate the uh, interface so that I get all the declaration of the methods that i wanted which is great and now i can go back to my controller over here and you can start using all the different methods something like add product delete product get all products get product by id and update product something like that so you will see that all these details are coming for me automatically because i have those things uh, being created which is quite cool and now i'm not really going to be writing the exact same code again and again like doing exactly how the update or the creates are going to be called rather i'm just going to copy paste some of the code that i have already written and i think this implementation get product by name is not there which i'm probably not even worried about for now so i'm just going to get rid of that and that's it that's about our controller and i guess now if i try putting the code over here and our PowerShell over here, or maybe PowerShell can be here. And now if I try saving anything, you can see that the changes are automatically happening for me. And in fact, the Swagger has been updated as well. And you will see that in the Swagger, now I have the get uh, product by ID, get product, create product, update product, and delete product. So I have almost all the CRUD operation uh, so that I can perform and see what's really happening for example if i wanted to get the product id one and you will see that i'm actually getting an error here well this error is happening i guess it's because it says clearly that while it is trying to attempt the attempt to activate this product controller it is throwing us this error with this particular i product repository which means it is not registered i mean this i product repository is not registered with this product controller over here which we need to do in the startup class file and because in ASP.NET everything is actually working based on the dependency injection and everything has to be registered inside the container if not it is going to throw us an error and that's what something we need to be doing as well so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here I'm just going to do services dot add transient and I'm going to add the product repository something like this which is quite important so let me add the usings there you go i think that's done and once i save this probably it is going to be updated for me so i think it will have updated yeah that's done and let me try running the score once again right out i'm just gonna hit one and there we go now we can see that we could get the product like one and if i try executing two it's coming up as well which is great and now I'm going to go and I'm going to get all the products, which is coming up, which is great. And we can also create a new product over here if we wanted to. That's something we can do from here. 
and we can update the product and we can delete the product i guess i really am very comfortable that these codes are going to work so this is how we could create a simple web api using dotnet and that's super straightforward and the code is also super simple as well as you can see we have just did nothing here like we have followed a bit of mvc pattern here like we have a controller to perform the access of the actual orm uh, using the entity framework and we created the repository pattern to make the abstraction and we also created the product model uh, to actually represent the table structure and you can see that we have the product db context and uh, we also have the seed data to actually insert the data and all the database are actually saving in this product.db as you can see over here this is actually where our storage is actually happening like the new uh, data that we are inserting from the seed data so this is the product db which is doing all the magics for us so that's it guys this is how we could be able to create the simple api using asp.net web api starting our next section we will see how we can start developing a web application or web mvc application and access this particular api